Hello and welcome to House and Home. I'm Theresa Miria and I'm glad to have you join me once again. It's the month of September, which means the Independence Day celebration is around the corner. If you don't have any plans yet, then we hope you can learn something from watching House and Home. To kickstart tonight, let's direct our attention to Chef Francois to find out how to make a tasty salad. Enjoy. Okay, today what we're going to do, we're going to do something very simple. We're going to do salad dressing. Each salad gets its dressing. I'm going to do something very simple with you. I got a weapon here. I got my big spoon and I got my small spoon. All right, what we're going to do with a simple French dressing called a vinaigrette. Okay, we have a bowl up here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a bit of mustard. One little spoon, not too much because I'm out here. I'm not too much liquid here. Okay. I got ground pepper. Lick, lick, ground pepper. I got salt. Lick, lick, salt. You come right up. Okay. What I have up here, I got white vinegar. You could use white vinegar, you could use balsamic vinegar, you could use cider vinegar, it's up to you. Flavor, it comes from our blue yopla. Okay, now, I got my weapon, we call that the whisk. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to build it up, slowly, slowly. If you don't want mustard on your vinaigrette, you don't put mustard. I put mustard on mine because it gives him flavor. And you whisk it up. Whoa, careful. Okay, now, I hard is it to make a vinaigrette? Vinegar, mustard, salt, pepper, and tassel. Now, if you like, you like him put him dig dig test, test, but vinegar for you. Okay, you're going to get, I wash it down there. A little bit of garlic. Garlic, it come. Oh no, ginger, sorry. Ginger. Garlic, oh, the ginger onion, sorry. I'm, I'm confused today, I don't know why. It must be because the board is, I'm, I'm sorry about it. And garlic is top, yeah, lick, lick, yeah. Okay, put him low up. And low. Now, I'm thinking from me, I'll put him some place, something different from up. We got lick, lick, parmesan. So I'm making some lick, lick, parmesan, we put him low up. Not too much, lick, lick, tassel, and flavor of him, yeah. All right? We scrape it again. Perfect. Okay, now that's the basic for a vinaigrette. Now, like I said, it's up to you. If you want to use cider vinegar, white vinegar, balsamic vinegar. Okay, vinaigrette doesn't have any oil. So people on diet or people can take fat or things like that, it is perfect for your salad. What you could do too, on a vinaigrette, and what I will do now, I will put a little bit of lemon. And tassel. Whisk a little bit. And vinaigrette for you already. You look okay? Perfect. Okay, dead vinaigrette doesn't need refrigeration. You can leave it outside. I'm all right. And we got something in vinegar, or give me or get something together, okay? So, let him outside, put him in one plat bottle. Time is set down, lick, lick, get him bottle, shake him up, lick, put him in a salad for you. And that's all. You must think thing good. Loaded plat dressing and vinegar, one cup. That's all. 
mustard, one teaspoon, salt, one teaspoon, pepper, one teaspoon. Okay, all get us something low and black. Garlic, ginger, onion, and taste your mouth blow you. Like I said, leave it outside, that doesn't, doesn't have to go in the fridge. If you want something more, a bit more rich and better, on the next show, I will show you how to do a better dressing. Or maybe suitable better for what you want to do. But that's a simple vinaigrette. Mmm. Sharp. That's a vinaigrette. Oh. Yes, indeed. Oh. Indeed. <laughs> vinaigrette, you don't need much. When you do a vinaigrette, what you put on a salad, you sprinkle like that. And tassel. You know, can put plenty? Not a lot. Not a lot. And tassel. That's why we call that a vinaigrette. That was the first party of the show tonight. I want to teach you to do simple thing. And we're going to go on the salad dressing all the way to the next show I will have with you. I hope you enjoy the show. Good luck. Bonsoir. Mama Uta. What a way to start off the show. Thank you, Chef Francois, for showing us how to make the vinaigrette salad. Viewers, let us know if you want to see more of these amazing recipes and please do visit MTV Online to catch up on any of the recipes you've missed out on. Coming up after the break, we join Leon on Shopping with Brian Bell. Welcome back. This week's feature on Brian Bell, Leon covers the football finals fever. So this is to all you football lovers, it's your chance to get some updates and yes, Brian Bell has got you covered with the products that can assist you with watching and indeed supporting your team. Welcome again to Shopping with Brian Bell on House and Home. I'm your host, Leon Gowie. Now the NRL and the Intra Super Cup are winding down the season to the business end, which means it's finals footy time. We're going to show you some great products Brian Bell has available, like our NRL merchandise, which we have an abundance of, and our sharp TVs that you can get to watch all the action on. So let's go get started. Rugby League is our national sport, and almost everyone in PNG supports a team in the NRL. PNG goes absolutely crazy over this sport. And for some, it's a religion, especially now with our very own PNG Hunters in the Intra Super Cup, which gives us more incentive to watch and support our very own team. Brian Bell stocks and sells a great range of NRL merchandise, like the supporters' jerseys, the supporters' caps, and the supporters' rugby league balls. We've got merchandise for all your teams, like the Raiders, Sharks, Cowboys, and the Storms, just to name a few. Why not show your support in the best possible way? Get your team jersey, get your team cap, and cheer them on. And after you're done watching and cheering, then you can have some fun and emulate what your heroes did on TV with a bit of backyard footy. Not only is the NRL going through the finals part of the footy, but also the Inter Super Cup or the Queensland Cup, which our Hunters boys are a part of. The Hunters are still in the mix to win their maiden premiership. And you can support them by buying genuine merchandise from Brian Bell. We also have new products, new Hunters supporters merchandise that you can get. These include... Hunter Supporters Packs, which includes a string bag, a Hunter shirt, and a Hunter's cap, and also our round neck Hunter Supporters shirts. What better way to show your loyalty and passion than to purchase one of these supporters merchandise from a PNG company, Brian Bell. And support our team, get yourself a supporter shirt, get behind our boys as they kick off their finals campaign. Now we've only solved half the problem here. You've got your jersey, your cap, and your football. All that's left to do is support your team. Now, where can you go to watch your team play and support them the best way you can? Why not watch them in the comfort of your own home in front of your new television that you can buy from Brian Bell? Let's go check out our televisions. 
There is a diverse range of quality televisions that are well priced and is guaranteed to keep you entertained with Finals Footy in 2016. Like Sharp. Sharp is a household name in Brian Bell. Simply put, it's a quality brand with quality products sold at a quality shop. That's Brian Bell. Let's take a look at some. Check out this 19 inch LED Sharp TV. It's absolutely perfect for the single person, young couple, or a small family. The good thing about this TV, it's also backed up by Brian Bell's guarantee of service. Next is this Sharp LCD 40 inch television. Like I said before, Sharp equals quality. This TV is reasonably priced and at the same time you can enjoy all the finals for the action on this TV. How? Well obviously with its bigger high definition screen, you won't miss any of the action. Its slim design with its steady legs is a perfect fit for your living room. The bigger screen also means more people can clearly see all the action on the TV. Now if you're worried about space, then fear not. We have perfect wall mounts that you can mount on the wall and stick your TV on so it can save you space and at the same time you can enjoy all the games. If your living room or your TV room is a bit too small and you can't fit a coffee table or TV stand there so you can put your TV on to watch, then not to worry. Our Ross wall mounts are absolutely perfect so you won't miss any of the highlights this year's finals footy. The flat to wall mount, the tilt TV wall mount, double arm full motion LCD mount and the swivel and tilt mount. Now our final TV to showcase is this 65 inch sharp LED LCD TV. There are a number of reasons why I chose this TV. Yes it's a high definition TV and it's very very big but the main reason why I chose this TV was because of its LED feature. LED is a simple acronym for light emitting diodes. And what this simply means, or in layman's terms, is that a light from the back of the TV brings out the RGB colors, the red, green, and blue colors, that is, and makes it more vibrant and intense, bringing you higher definition picture quality, making your experience of this finals footy that much better. And it's sold here at Brian Bell. So there you have it. Come on into your nearest home center, check out the NRL and Hunter's merchandise available, step out in your colors and support your team. If you're looking for a TV, then Brian Bell is your best bet. Check out our sharp range of TVs that can fit in your budget. And always remember, great prices, great products, great after-sales service. That's Brian Bell. Go the Hunters, go the mighty, mighty Brisbane Broncos. And until our next time together, it's goodbye and God bless. That was shopping with Brian Bell, where Leon showcased their football products to help keep you updated on your favorite football team. Home Habits is coming up after the break, so stay tuned. Welcome back. Home Habits is one of our DIY segment in which we show you how to do simple tasks at home. Tonight, Godfrey Men shows us how you can get that shine on your shoes. Now, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you just hate it when your shoes get all worn and dirty and scrapped? Well, why not polish them? On tonight's episode of Home Habits, we show you how you can polish your shoes to be so shiny you'll see your own reflection in them. So before we can start polishing our shoe, we have to make sure that we have all the stuff that we need. Now, first of all, we'll start off with polishes. They can come in a lot of different varieties. Uh, if you have a leather shoe, you're more suited with wax or cream polishes. They feed the leather so then the leather becomes stronger after you polish them. Now, they can come in a lot of different colors based on what kind of color shoe you have. I mean, for this one, we, we're using a black shoe, so we have a black polish. Uh, you can also use a neutral colored polish, though. We can fit 
any other color and this regardless of the shoe color. All right, so moving on to the tools of which you're gonna use to polish the shoe. You can either use a brush or like even a toothbrush or maybe like cotton buds just to reach hard to reach places. The brushes, they come with, uh, they come with shoe polish packs and you can use them if you want to invest in that. But the advantage there is that the brushes that come with the packs, they're designed to be used for polishing the shoes. They're the right bristle strength and they're the right shape in most cases. But if you can't find a brush or you need to reach some hard to reach places, just using a cotton bud is fine or a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, obviously. <laughs> so, all right, before we can get started on polishing the shoe, we have to make sure that we've lined our work area with newspaper, all right? So then we don't get any polish on the you know floor or whatever we're working on. All right, before we can start polishing our shoe, we have to make sure that we clean the shoe first. We have to make sure that it's free of dirt, we have to make sure that it's just completely clean. And then we leave it out to dry for a minute. Now while it's drying, you can fix yourself a snack, you can uh, take a nap, you can text your girlfriend that you can't hang out with her today because you are polishing your shoe. All right, so now that your shoes are dry and once you've come back from your disappointed girlfriend or boyfriend, I'm not judging, you can finally start polishing your shoe. Now you've seen that I've taken the shoelaces out. That'll give me more access to the tongue and it'll make sure that the shoelaces don't get stained by the shoe polish. So to start polishing, you take your brush, take not too much though, you take a bit of the polish, and then slip your hand into the mouth of the shoe just to give you a little more grip and to make sure that your other hand won't get polished on it. Then you start working the polish into the shoe in small circular motions, you see? Like so. All right, the goal of this is to make sure that you coat the shoe evenly with the polish, making sure that you pay special attention to the, to the toe, <laughs> apologies, to the toe of the shoe as well as the heel of the shoe because these are the, these are the places on the shoe that experience the most wear. So you make sure that you give those special attention. All right, all right. Make sure that you don't apply too much pressure but also don't apply not enough. I mean, the goal is to be just somewhere in the middle so you can get enough polish onto the shoe. Get a little more onto that toe. All right. And into the tongue we go. There we go. Nice. Now you see it can get a little messy, but we'll come back to that in the aftercare. Alright, let me make sure, okay, mm. getting that heel nice and coated, eh. alright, there we go, better, eh, polished and shiny, nice, okay, now, an optional place to polish would be down here, right between the sole of the shoe and where your toes are, the part of the shoe that basically doesn't touch the ground. You can do that, you can either use uh, this brush, you can use a toothbrush, you can use any small, uh, a cotton bud you can use, yeah, to just get to those hard to reach places. Now, okay, once that's evenly coated, you can set it down to dry. Okay, so we'll place that down to dry. And you can also put a second coat of polish. It's up to you completely, but it's better to put multiple layers of thin coats rather than just one huge coat. Because the advantage there is when you put multiple layers of thin coats, it's a more even polish. Uh, whereas if you use one, one giant thick layer, that's just, you're gonna get a really uneven polish across the shoe. All right, so we'll just place that to dry while we work on our other shoe. All right, so now for this section of the shoe polishing, well, your shoes are already polished, but what you want to do right now is remove any excess polish. You can do that by getting a cotton ball and just really using your wrists to get off that excess polish. Now, don't be afraid to really like get in there, all right? Because the heat generated from the cotton ball is going to uh, meld in that polish and it's going to give it a shine. It's going to Get rid of all the excess and it's gonna leave you with just the amount you need. Yeah. All right, 
Now the best way to do this is to use your wrist and to go in little circular motions like so. Really push in and basically uh, get off what you don't need. <laughs> All right. Uh, now you can probably see that the shoe is starting to shine a little. That's a technique that you can uh, delve into more where you can use basically uh, another cotton ball or you can get a rag or just a soft rag, a soft clean rag and do basically this but uh, until you're satisfied with the shine. There, shiny and clean. And there it is, your shoes are now polished and shiny and clean and ready to be the things that separate you from whatever it is you walk on. <sighs> shiny. This is an everyday task that most men neglect at some point, especially when they're in a rush. Not just men, even women should know how to polish shoes. Thanks, Godfrey. Coming up after the break is Healthy Minds with Dr. Andy. Welcome back. Keeping a healthy mind is very important because whenever we're stressed, it also affects our immune system. So for tonight, Dr. Ambi speaks to us about another important topic on healthy minds. This is Healthy Mind with Dr. Ambi, proudly brought to you by Telecom PNG Limited. Hi viewers, welcome to our Healthy Mind Show. Well, this evening we talk awesome, good play evening through. Now we continue to learn many things in our lives to keep ourselves healthy and happy all time. Well, this evening, one name something you make and talk talk. Make pine in one plus good plus topic or same law. Plenty old man got plenty stress and about and all talk talk law. All loved ones when they get sick, what are they doing? What are they going through? So I came back with some one of the topics called strategies. Strategies mean you by kiss him some black and sour law this lana line him how you make can help him. You na old man sick. Huh? So strategies for consumers and also family caregivers. Meeting in Mosemem, this like topic can improve your lifestyle much more healthier and stay healthy. What can we talk about on that is the caregivers and also support persons have to know some of those strategies or to get to know more on how we can help our loved ones. When someone hear a diagnosis of some black like kind sick, you can be very upset, especially cancer or any other lifestyle diseases. Many of us always get very upset or perturbed about the whole thing and we are desperate and there we feel helpless. Well, viewers, we don't have to feel that way at all. If you and I can sit and understand the whole issue, we can make a big difference and never feel lonely about this issue. Now, some black kind of research have shown that we play a major role. That means we, as a family members, play a huge of major role in looking after the loved ones. So if your loved ones have been diagnosed with a cancer or any terminal illnesses or one in something, what matters here is to how we can handle it when we hear such thing and what we should understand and what we can do about it. Now some of the ways patients, that means consumers and also the family can get some way of dealing these issues. Number one issue is to put an end to the secret, okay, the family secret. Put an end to the family secret. You have to listen a little more carefully. Honesty is the best way, still the best way to that you can have a peace in your heart. Mostly, we try to play a game of keeping things very secret, but being honesty, it brings a good policy to bring things 
and we can understand better what we are going through or your loved one is going through and we can make a difference. So the mostly we try to protect the family. We want to protect within the family that is like kids or husbands or wife or mama or papa or some. We hide things but remember these things do backfire on you. So it is important for us to talk and communicate openly. Okay, don't get perturbed because I know many of us do these things. So put an end to the family secret. We'll go step by step. No, that is one of the strategies. Number two, include your children. So when your loved one has been diagnosed with some kind of terminal illness or cancer or kind of lifestyle diseases, it's important to include your children to talk about this issue. Many times you may think him all same law or all Pekinini got limited knowledge and they won't understand what you're doing. But it is important to put it in a way to for the children also to know what is going on because the children also may realize they may be the cause for such illness in the parents or the, the loved ones in the family. So we are not blaming the children, but children being aware, you don't want the children to have a mental health issues in the future. So they are integrated and understood so they all can get together. And that is one of the strategies to keep the consumer or the patients very healthy. So they themselves can change and be a better one. Number three is also be selective. Okay, so everybody under the uh, you know sun does not want to uh, tell this to everyone. You don't go and tell everybody under the sun. You don't go and open. Oh, I've got this, or my uncle has got that. I'm not telling you. You're not going to say. Be selective whom you are talking. Where you are going to get the help from. So you, there is a secret, but there is whom you are associating with is very important because being being selective and opening up this t topic about the illness, it will strengthen you and also make you feel, uh, you know, stronger. And then you are handling the issue to deal how you can do that. And so sharing being strong sense of uh, being strong and also very sensibly st strengthened. The number four strategy is be aware about how a family and friends can control and does not be you know, ashamed of their cell because it is uh, once you start asking, can you cook for me? Can you do help this? You know, there is a help needed. But don't be ashamed. Ask for help. So be clear about the family of the whole thing and get to involve with them and be aware that they can also help you to strengthen that until you get yourself be in control. So caregiver is more than emotional because they are also caregiver be involved physically, financially. So you need to uh, take care of yourself. So don't forget about that. Narpla something awesome mito awesome. There are many way of chronic illnesses can affect or influence your family. That is, it can interfere with your daily routine. So many changes can happen and limitations can happen. So take care of it because it has got the illness has got an impact. Number two, family may need to share more things to going and responsibility rather than putting it in one person because the one who is taking care can be fatigued and simply it's like one person involved. So family may need to share in taking care of this person. Number three, family also member may experience strong emotions like uh, uh, guilty, anger, uh, anxiety, and you know, depressed, and all these feelings can come. They are normal reaction when you identify these issues, terminal illness, the stress, but take care of it. There are enough, we will be talking about more on how we can take care of the stress, but you need to take care of that issue. Narpla Osem till that member may need to find out the ways to be independent as possible. You know, patient also would like to be independent as possible. So give them the chance that they can be incorporated and interfere with your integrate into your way. And Narpla something, the final point is to despite the demand of the illness, also some blood time you need to work hard and make it as your normal because you don't want the patient to be feared
feel that they are putting energy onto you, make it as if it's normal, get things, limited things, and you may have to come out and all family members have to share the points and ill members should not feel guilty. So make it as a normal when somebody is very ill, make it as a normal way to move on in life and make a change in your life. And well, you have to take care of leading. These things can lead, lead to burnout and also you need to take time out. Well, viewers, we have found out some of the strategies, how consumers and the family members who are taking care can understand this issue and make a difference. Well, until next time, I'm sure this is a time for you to put Papa God first and by giving wisdom, Think about it, change, make a big change in your lifestyle and you can make a big difference and a good caregiver. Until then, take care and God bless you all. Bye bye now. Healthy Mind was proudly brought to you by Telecom PNG Limited. That was Healthy Minds with Dr. Ambi addressing strategies for consumer and family caregivers. We'll be back with more on House and Home. Welcome back, you're watching House and Home. The Port Mosby Nature Park believes in conserving Papua New Guinea's flora and fauna. In the last episode, we had a look at why we should plant trees and we found three important things, water, shelter and medicine. Now let's take a look at what Shalomi has prepared to show us. Hello and welcome to another segment on more gardening tips with Port Mosby Nature Park. I am Pali and this is Shalomi. Plants are really important to people and to our environment. So today we'd like to give you some tips on how to plant them properly so they succeed. Let's get started, shall we? Yes, shall we? Bones sinking like stones, all that we fall for. Homes, places we've grown, all of us are done. If you want your plants to have a long and healthy life, it's important to give them the best start possible. This means making sure they have a good strong root system and a nice shape. Today we'd like to add some more plants to our rainforest section. As you can see here, the soil is nice and rich and moist. It's a perfect spot for planting. Dig a hole about twice the size of what you need. Loosening the soil around the roots will help them to grow quicker. Alright, looks like our hole is ready. Pali, do you know what this plant is called? Yes, I know this plant. This plant is a native plant in PNG. It is found mostly in Eastern Britain province and they use it for uh, cultural purposes um, such, such as traditional attire. In South Christian we call it villas and it has a very good smell. Loosen the roots and cut off any that are circling around or bending back in towards the centre of the root ball, as these can strangle the plant as they thicken with age. We want the roots to grow downwards and out. If you need to prune the roots, try to trim an equal amount from the top half as well to reduce stress on the plant. Lightly trim the tips evenly all over and remove any branches that are dead or damaged. Place your plant in the hole at the same depth as the soil level in the pot. We have nice rich soil here, but if you have poor soil, you might need to add some soil improvers like compost, uh, broken down leaves or animal manures. If you need to do that, mix it through very thoroughly before you fill the hole. When you're putting your soil in, make sure there are no gaps and press the soil down firmly as you go. Press the soil down firmly to keep the plant secure in the ground. Water in immediately to settle the soil into any gaps and soak the whole root system. 
Keep moist until new growth appears and slowly reduce the amount of watering. It's best to give a deep watering less often, rather than a little bit every day, to encourage the roots to grow deeper, which will help it to survive in the dry season. After a few months, you can come back and give your plants some fertiliser. Any kind of fertiliser is better than none, so use whatever you have, a dynamic lifter or animal manures or something like this slow release fertiliser. You should probably do this about every three to four months to keep your plants growing strongly. Thank you for joining us here at Nature Park. This is Shilomi and I'm Paliame. See you next time. Bye. Somebody to lean on. That was gardening with Shilomi, showing us how to plant trees and shrubs. Plants are very important as they play a huge role most commonly in the ecosystem for continuity for the existence of living things. Thanks to Port Mosby Nature Park for that. Home Cosmos is a new addition that features what you can use at home to get creative to make yourself look good and most possibly in a decent and presentable way. Let's have a look at Home Cosmos for some nail art designs. I'm sure you will learn some new creative ways of using your nail polish. Everyone has the right to look their best, feel great about themselves and occasionally look charming at some point. Grooming is the focal point of it all. Hi and welcome to Home Cosmos. Today we will learn how to make some amazing nail art designs. There are specific tools for nail art designs that are required to well execute fantastic creations on your nails. Tools like sponge, mainly for a softer look, nail clippers, pen brushes, stencils and the list goes on. The items can be relatively expensive when listed and added up for purchasing. You get to spend a lot of money on the tools, but rest assured, I will show you what you can use at home to make those amazing designs. And to help me with the creations on my nails, I have my lovely friend Tinzi. Hopefully you like it enough to try it out. So let's get straight into it. So there are a couple of designs we've actually prepared, but for now we've chosen just three to show you and they are the sponge nail art, cross design and the ladybug. This is an amazing design. It's called the sponge nail art or most women call it sponge ombre nails. For this you will need a sponge, a clear base coat, mixture of nail polish colors. I chose a medium purple, light purple, blue and the black nail polish. You will need your glue of course. You can either use a glue or a nail polish remover. As you can see, this is a dish washer sponge which we're using. Like I said, if you can't get a sponge suitable for this art, you can still get creative and use what you have at home. Step 1. Start by applying the first color on the sponge which is the black. Then blue. Then the medium purple, light purple. Apply generously to make them stand out. Step 2. Dab the sponge on your nail. Do it thoroughly until all colors are perfectly on. As you can see, the work done looks messy, but we will surely get rid of it later on. We have the glue to get it all done. The next thing we're doing is the cross design. For this, you will need a scissors, a double-sided sticky tape, black and white polish, and of course your glue. Apply black as the base color. Step 2. Cut two thin pieces of the double-sided tape and place both horizontally and vertically onto your nails to make a cross design. Use your white nail polish to cover the black polish and the tapes. 
wait till it's semi-dry and remove the tapes. Now you can clearly see the cross design. It looks beautiful. Remember, I didn't apply the top coat as I promised earlier that I will do it once all the designs are completed. The last design we're doing is the ladybug. It's easy as one, two, three. So for this, you will need a rich red nail polish together with black and white. Step one, start with the red polish and apply generously. Wait till it gets dry and move on to the next step. Step two, draw a thin line down in the middle of the nail and across at the tip. Get your dotting tool and make little spots around on the red polish. Finally, use white polish to add the eyes at the tip of your nails. Now that we have all the designs complete, we apply the top coat on each of them. This will help your designs last longer. This is an everyday DIY activity at home that you can try. All ladies will definitely enjoy this idea. And trust me, one can give a second look at these amazing designs. Thank you for watching and do continue to keep an eye out for more DIY activities here on Home Cosmos with House and Home. That was Home Cosmos with some of the amazing nail art designs. This is for all you ladies to enjoy and make as many creations on your nail as you can. Well viewers, we've come to the end of our show. Just as much as I've enjoyed your company, I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. For any comments on any of our features, contact the House and Home team on the email address now showing on your screen. You can also get in touch with us through our House and Home Facebook page and to view this episode again, visit MTV Online. And remember that there's more that you can get for your home and lifestyle improvement when you tune into House and Home. Until the next time, I'm Theresa Miria and on behalf of the House and Home team, pleasant viewing, goodbye.